name is Dawn Matthews. Welcome to this lesson in the series on data representation in computers. In the previous lesson, we learned that a computer understands only digital data in the form of streams of zeros and ones. We could say that the language a computer understands is composed entirely of zeros and ones. We ended the lesson with Salai's question of how a computer with only zeros and ones can represent all the letters and numbers we input. Well, the answer is that we'll have to use more than one bit at a time. During this lesson, we will learn about bytes and words and how groups of bits that we call binary codes can represent characters like letters and punctuation marks. We will see that numbers are sometimes represented differently from characters in the computer. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to define a byte and a word, explain how binary codes are used to represent characters, describe how numbers are represented in the computer using the binary numbering system. Cool, I see that Dawn has left us yet another worksheet and some cool light bulbs to work with. Yeah, so what are we doing today? All right, lesson two, worksheet one. Read the following extract and then complete the tasks. You'll remember that if we had one light bulb, there were only two combinations possible on or off. When we had two light bulbs, we had four possible combinations, both bulbs off. One bulb off and one on. One bulb on and the other off, both bulbs on. Note how these combinations have been filled in the table below. Great, so we're going to be working with one bit. That is zeros or ones, which gives us a possible two values. So let's demonstrate using these light bulbs. One will be represented every time the light bulb is on and zero will present it every time the light bulb is not shining. So if we were to add a second bit, in this case a second light bulb, we'd get the following combinations. Both off, zero, zero. First off, second on, zero, one. Second off, first on, one, zero. And both light bulbs on, we'd get one, one. This gives us a complete combination of four, and of course a total of four values. Tasks, one. Now use the circuit board with three bulbs connected. Determine how many combinations are possible now. Write down your observations. Two. Two. You can go. <laughs> okay. Use your observations to determine a pattern for predicting the number of combinations for a different number of light bulbs. Cool. So let's add in another bit. Hmm. All right. What do you notice about the number of combinations as we increase the number of bits? Well, we've got more combinations, yeah. which is more values, basically. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Is there a pattern that you see? Look at the number of twos that are multiplied Write down what you think. Can you predict the number of combinations that four bulbs or bits would generate? What are the possible combinations we could get? Let's have a look. Here are all the combinations that we could get. Off, 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 or zero, zero, zero. Off, off, on, or zero, zero, one. Off, on, off, or zero, one, zero. Off, on, on, or zero one one on off off or one zero zero on off on or one zero one on on off or one one zero on 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 or one 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 that gives us eight different combinations with which we could represent eight different values how many combinations would we get if we use another bit twice as many as with three bits. And it also says, can you predict a formula based on your observations? You should write the formula in a similar form. N bits is equal to how many combinations? Hmm, let's see. One bit gives us two combinations. Two bits gives us four combinations. Three bits gives us eight combinations. And four bits gives us 16 combinations. But how many combinations would N bits give us? I'm not sure, but maybe Dawn can help us out there. Okay guys, I'm going to write it here and you follow what I'm doing. 2 is equal to 2. 4 is equal to 2 times 2. 8 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2. 16 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So now we write the combination like this. Number of bits. Number of combinations. 1. 2 to the power 1 is equal to 2. 2. 2 to the power 2 
is equal to 4. 3. 2 to the power 3 is equal to 8. 4. 2 to the power 4 is equal to 16. And the formula for working out the number of combinations within bits would be equal to... Hmm, let me see, I did this in maths. So for n bits, there would be n twos multiplied together. So that would be, I got it, 2 to the power n. Well done. Now use the formula you came up with to answer task 3 of your worksheet. Alright, so that would be 2 to the power 5, which is 2 times 2 to the power 4. That is 2 times 16, and 2 times 16 is equal to 32. Well, what about 6 bits? Actually, well, I guess it's going to be 2 times 32, which is 64. And for 7 bits, it would be 128 combinations, and for 8 bits, it would be 256 combinations. Good. A combination of zeros and ones is called a bit pattern. Different patterns are used to represent different characters. Have a look at this particular combination or bit pattern. It's commonly used to represent the letter M. Cool, now I understand how zeros and ones are used for letters. You've got it. We can choose a unique bit pattern for every letter of the alphabet, both uppercase and lowercase. So each character will have its own unique combination of 8 bits. How many bits do you think we need for all the keys on the keyboard? Well, there are 26 letters and counting both capital and small letters, that will give us 52. Hmm, there are 10 digits in our number system, so that would be 62. What about the punctuation marks like commas and question marks? Well, I know for a fact that there are 32 of those. So therefore, 62 plus 32, that will give us 94. Right. Then there are some unprintable characters like tab and space. Now just imagine if each person chose his or her own bit patterns for the different characters. It would be absolute chaos. So we use an agreed pattern or code for each character. The agreed set of bit patterns for each character is called an encoding scheme. There's more than one encoding scheme. One very commonly used 7-bit encoding scheme is called ASCII, which is an acronym for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Although ASCII uses 7 bits, each character is stored in a byte. The 8th bit is set to 0. We know that 7 bits represent 128 combinations, and from our table, we said that 8 bits represent 256 combinations. Between 7 and 8 bits, there's a difference of 128 combinations. There are other encoding schemes that take advantage of these extra 128 combinations that we can get with the 8th bit set to 1. ASCII is fine for English, but not for languages such as Chinese, Arabic and Hebrew. ASCII cannot cope with a different alphabet and symbols in these languages. For this reason, a 16-bit encoding scheme called Unicode was developed. 16 bits gives us 65,536 different combinations, enough essentially to encode all written languages. The programming language Java uses Unicode for its characters. If everyone in the computing world were to start using Unicode, it would make international communication in our global village much easier. So then why doesn't everybody use Unicode? Hmm. Well, I guess it's because we started off with ASCII and there's a lot of software out there that uses ASCII. It would take an enormous amount of time and money to convert it all. Also, most of the input and output devices that are commonly available use ASCII. Maybe this will change in the future. So far, we've been talking about how we represent characters. We now need to think about numbers a little more. Sometimes, numbers are considered characters such as a number in an address. However, when you have to do calculations with numbers, such as adding or subtracting them, then they can't be treated as characters. The reason has to do with the amount of space large numbers need when they are processed. So let's look more carefully at this and see how. Before a computer can process numbers, they're fetched from memory, that's RAM, and placed in temporary storage areas in the CPU or central processing unit called registers. 
only a certain number of bits can fit into the registers of any computer and this will determine the number of bits that can be processed at any one time. We have a special term for the number of bits a computer can work with at one time and this is called a computer word. The number of bits that can fit into the registers is the word size of the computer. For example, some of the small microprocessors have 8-bit registers. That means that their word size is 8 bits or 1 byte. Hmm, so you're telling me that my computer can only work with 8 bits at a time? No, Salai. I was talking about small microprocessors, like one that you might find in an electronically controlled washing machine. Your PC is more likely to have a 32-bit word. So that's 4 bytes then? That's right. And the larger the word size of a computer, the more data it can work with at one time. And the faster the computer will be, right? Exactly. But something's wrong here. If my computer can work on 4 bytes word, that means that each character is 1 bit. But that means that the largest number that my computer can handle is 9,999. Gee, I thought my computer could do better than that. The mistake you're making here, Salai, is to think that numbers in the computer are represented the same way as characters. Characters are represented using ASCII or Unicode codes, one byte or two bytes for Unicode for each character. Numbers, on the other hand, use the binary numbering system. Have a look at the number 5342. How many thousands does it have? Five. And hundreds? Three. Yes. There are also four tens and two ones. We could write the number as 5342 is equal to 5 times 1000 plus 3 times 100 plus 4 times 10 plus 2 times 1. We could also write this number in another way. Do you remember that 1000 can be written as 10 times 10 times 10 or 10 to the power of 3? Oh yes, and 100 can be written as 10 times 10, or 10 to the power of 2. Good Archie. So we could rewrite our sum as 5342 is equal to 5 times 10 to the power 3, plus 3 times 10 to the power 2, plus 4 times 10 to the power 1, plus 2 times 10 to the power 0. Can you see now why we call it the decimal system? It's obviously based on 10. If we count the positions of the digits starting on the right with 0, then the digit 5 in position 3 actually has the value 5 multiplied by 10 to the power 3. The digit 2 in position 0 has the value of 2 times 10 to the power 0. Why do we use base 10? probably because we have 10 fingers. The computer does not have 10 fingers. Remember, it's an electronic device and the bottom line is that it can only distinguish between two states, on and off, or one and zero. That is why it uses the binary numbering system. Let's take the following binary number. 11101 base two. Do you see the small 2 at the bottom, the subscript? We use this to show the number is base 2, not base 10. And we read it as 11101 base 2. It is not 11101. Just like we did with the decimal number, we can write the binary number out as follows. Remember, the last position on the right is position 0. That's where we start and then we count towards the left. If we replace the powers of 2 by their values, we get 1 times 1 plus 0 times 2 plus 1 times 4 plus 1 times 8 plus 1 times 16 and that gives us 1 plus 0 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 which is 29 base 10. In other words, 11101 base 2 is equal to 29 base 10. Do you see the small subscript 10? We don't usually show the subscript. It's commonly accepted that if no base appears, it's understood to be base 10. But 
when we are working with different bases, we need to give a subscript to show which base we are using. Look at the difference in value between these numbers. 11101, this is base 10, and its value is 11101. And 11101, base 2, has the decimal value 29. Right, Dawn, but why did you only use 5 bits there, not 8 bits? Well, Salai, if I were to store the decimal number 29 in a microprocessor that used an 8-bit word, I would fill the rest of the word up with zeros, like this. On a 16-bit computer, it would look like this. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. 0, 1. Let's summarize what we have learned today. Characters are represented in the computer by binary codes. ASCII is an encoding scheme that uses 7 bits for each character, making it possible to store one character in one byte since a byte is 8 bits. A word is the number of bits that a computer can work with at one time. Numbers are represented in the computer using the binary numbering system. Here's your task for today. Define a byte and a word. How many different values can be represented in 10 bits? Decode the following ASCII message. You will need to find a table that gives ASCII codes to be able to decode the message. Most programming books include a table of ASCII codes as an appendix at the back. See you again for the next lesson when we will look more closely at the binary numbering system and see how we can convert decimal numbers to binary and binary numbers to decimal. And as always, don't forget to visit our website for more information. Go well!